Saturday's showdown, T1 versus Gen G Esports. Man, I'm already really interested in how this uh, this game is going to go, especially early on, because you can mitigate a lot with that Lissandra. And also, just generally, there's a lot of mid laners who would just die to oh, high oh. on repeat, but Lissandra actually able to survive the combo. I'd say so too. I mean, nameplates are on and everything like that. That does play a factor. Let's dive into game number one. Brion, Hana, do set. Brion, fighting. Hana, Sekwa, Hana, do set. Anwar, fighting. All right, let's do it. Woo! To limit the smolder. And in the meantime, they have a losing top lane matchup. Uh, which is just not going to be a fun time for Morgan. Yep. He is more of that ranged variety. As Delight is crashing into Polo here. Envy now trying to fight back. Already the trade working out quite nicely for Hummer Life Esports somehow, even though it's a smolder free 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, 12 to 8. Uh, this win rate actually used to be higher. Uh, I think that Ari, because she was in such a sort of crazy position as I'm going to hold my thought for a moment. Karis not actually going to head towards the claw. Is Zeka down to 100 or 150? Voidseeker not really finding too much there despite its name. So, bro, just going to head over towards the dragon. First one going to be an infernal. Going to feel absolutely fantastic. And I imagine that Harmer Life Esports will have no interest in contesting the first two drakes. Yeah, yeah. well, that's true. I, I, I should not count my chickens. I often talk about that. As Ghost is going to be used here. Zekka's moving in. Morgan is in so much trouble. Doran just throwing card after card. There's the gold card. There's the charm. And it's just that easy, guys. Uh, more crashing going on here. As you can see some Achoos being thrown over towards Envy. Peanut dashing forward. Killer Instinct going to be used, but it was red. Cease and desist comes down. Kick on a Peanut underneath the turret, but he has the flash to get himself out. Grand exit there for Polo, but they're not able to save there. Kaiser, who uses both summoner spells and still goes down. You know, not wanting to overstep there. But already we've seen like almost a 2,000 goal lead open up. And with TF, there's always a caveat. Yeah, Frozen Tomb does come down here. Azeka, with his unsealed spellbook, is able to just cleanse it away. Getting that summoner spell in trade to the ult. Always a good thing, though. Not actually going to find it as Viper Tide is up basically the whole wave as Doran's in a whole lot of trouble. Morgan, once he sinks his fangs in, he can certainly get a lot of work done. Oh, and that, actually, Doran's moving down, so... All right, there's a Magnet Storm in as well as, once again, the stun comes through. Cease and assist once again, and now Viper is untouched. Gideon gonna go down as Zekka makes his presence known. There are a couple of kills though for Bro as Karis. That's a really nice claw to get himself over. But now the CC's coming in and it's a double for the RE. Oh. Flashes over the fat part of the wall. It is absolutely gorgeous. And Viper collects his kill in the fight. Thinking about going for some sort of contest. Teleport available for Karis if he does want to get over there and Morgan in the vicinity. But Shelly's gonna go down. Hummer Life Esports, can they actually find themselves a fight? Grand Entrance is actually pretty good as Delight doesn't quite get the Magnet Storm and he will be taken down. Doran wants to get out of there. It is the world's shortest destiny that was then just not allowed. And that's just Bro killing a couple of members and Hummer Life Esports not finding an angle. Yeah, good move. And they can actually look for more. They still have Rakan ult. Yeah, exactly right. In goes the quickness, but the Grand Entrance doesn't quite get there. They'll be able to get another kill there. A big shutdown. Oh. Find it. Yeah, Gideon immediately getting that kickback onto Peanut as this Vault Breaker does get him out of there and even CC's Envy on his way in, but it doesn't matter because there are three people here for Bro and there is only Peanut for Hummer Life Esports and so they'll be able to get their third one in that extended play. And now, seeing Hummer Life Esports looking to use the Herald mid and claim this tier one, Bro not really in a position to defend. Yeah, and it's just going to be driven in there. Peanut has been one of our better drivers. And we'll now go for a secondary ride and look to head towards this bottom side. Let's see how she goes. Oh, Shelly just weaving through the trees and the rocks. Look at this, just beautiful. Man, and we'll get crazy. that secondary charge. But now there are a lot of bad guys in the area. And so the theory was good, but maybe it doesn't quite work out. There's a kick on a peanut though into safety after the flash. 
And now, I mean, the turret's gonna go down. Delight's looking for more. Yeah, there's the flash shattering strike. The Frozen Tomb used onto himself, but what can he do afterwards? He flashes away. We'll see whether that's going to work as Delight will just get crashed into. Cease and assist from Peanut as he goes so far. But look at Envy oh. trying to get into that back line. Immediate cleanse is great, but Viper is just flap, flap, flapping around and he will be able to take down the Kaiser. That reminded me. It just didn't work out for him at all in the end. And now 4 0 3 for Zeka. That's the sort of play where it's like, if it worked, it would have been sick. Yeah. It didn't. It really didn't. Is Destiny going to be used here as Morgan? I don't think this is a fair fight for our Lord. He's really having a rough time. Destiny's actually going to be used towards the top side. A little bit of a weird moment there, as I believe maybe Doran was into No, he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, that he can be. And Bro know exactly what that is about. Of course, Viper had the fastest uh, of the. 225, and now he's going to grab it even faster. There's a Magnus Storm onto Gideon. It's, he's just exploding. We'll burn down and we'll get executed as now Zeka down to 50%, but Envy's looking for him. Not going to find it. Polo has no damage. He has no options. And this might just be a clean ace here for Harmer Life, but it's not because Morgan's going to be able to take down the support. Still won't stop Harmer Life Esports from grabbing a triple. And Morgan and Karis find the angle. They're, they're not going to be unseen. There are control wards everywhere, all over the place. Cease and Assist comes in. They're engaging on the both of them at the same time as Karis will be taken down. Smolder gets the first one onto Morgan. It was a cute idea, but Harmer Life Esports just read it like a book. They had vision all over the place. Yep, so good at defending against these flanks. They have the TF, could obviously pop the Destiny as well, but... All right, there's a Magnus Storm to bring Delight in there. He will be kicked into the fountain as he's been a sacrificial horse lady this entire time. It doesn't matter though, because Bro are now relegated to this one as... Okay, they do manage to take down the TF. But uh, Zeka and Viper are still alive. They should be able to take down this last remaining Nexus turret. And a 25-minute victory wow. for a Smolder composition is not what I had on my bingo <laughs> card today, as they just explode. 9-0-6 in the end, 6-0-10 for Zeka. That Viper and Delight have played together many, many times, and their answer is, oh, we'll pick away the Rakan. They're going to still go for the Zyre, and then we can Smolder them. But of course, Viper can play Smolder as well. So the whole idea um, if that was the theory, uh, has holes in it. Uh, let's Doesn't say a ton. It was just really the, the previous draft was pretty rough, but they have pressure in the bot lane. Um, not sure what the top lane matchup's gonna be, but they've eliminated two heavy lane bullies that could cause problems. Ooh, okay, this Sorry, does goodness. give them a fair bit of magic damage now, but also maybe a lady with scissors and the Yoda with a gun. We'll see how it goes. Okay, Brion, Hana, do set. Brion, fighting. On the quoi? Hana, do set. And we're fighting. All right. Woo! That's what I'm looking for from Envy and Polo. So the sooner you can sort of find momentum in the lane, the better. And that is so far what they're doing. You can see Viper and Delight really wanting to get up to this minion wave. They are going to at least be able to do that. And it's not quite hitting minions yet, as they are finally going low enough to get some last hits in. I think we'll be able to grab, grab a few of them as there is the pulverize on the Polu, but his aftershock is going to eat that one up. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Mm. A little bit aggressive here between uh, Doran and Morgan. Level two. Ready to do battle. Snip, snips. And there's a flash forward from Polu. Captain Jack out from Viper, but that does mean flash traded for the cleanse. Yeah, and importantly enough, ignited after the cleanse, so I think. Pretty sure you got the damage duration off, and they might look for a dive here, but they need to be quick. Yeah, uh, Viper does make it to level two, as there's the headbutt away. Double pulverize as well, as now Delight taking matters into his own hands. Doran had already teleported down. Let's see whether he can get any value for it. It looks like the answer's no. So advantage does go to Bro in the end, I think. They were clearly hoping, sorry, that they were gonna try and get the playoff before Viper hit level two, before the, um... That's a lot of rocks, Zeka. Not sure about He flashes and it's first blood! No way. He even dodges! And Gideon, not gonna get the kill, but Karis, of course, is gonna be able to grab that one for himself. But that was silly! And, and uh, just completely fools all of us. Fools, bro. Fools the viewers. Uh, Peanut, though, he's gonna have to flash as well. Zeka has made it back to the lane, as, of course, the teleport was available. I'm speechless. You know, if he's got the priority... Oh, uh, sweet spot. Going to connect there onto Doran as... 
He's on the wrong side of the map right now, but he should be able to get himself nope. out of there. Max range hook there from Polo is now Zeka trying to get off to the side. Fair bit of damage on the Karas. Hepa Pulp is going to connect there as the explosive charge, not quite enough for Viper. He's just going to dash on in. That's his first kill of the game. Peanut grabs one as well as now Polo down to 50%. And that piercing arrow not really hitting for big damage. Hepa Pulp out once again. The slowdown from the extender beam and the flash forward from Viper. He's able to get over that wall as well. And Envy, no where to go. Melee range against the Zeri and the Burst Fire is going to do it. Try, try, try again uh, is, I believe, the saying. And so they are going to be able to take the Dragon this time around. Uh, Peanut just busy with his blue buff. And so Ocean going to be taken down. We're hoping for a Chemtech. But it's a Hex Hextech one instead. Um, uh, I'll win some, you lose some. Yeah. Uh, At least now we know what the soul is. Not really going to be doing too much. Oh. As Hook going to land max range. There is a cleanse out from Viper. High value on that one. As Delight finds himself in the brush, unable to really move. Gideon comes on over. Did. Oh, oh, there's Nature's Grasp. As Polo, nowhere to go. Titan's Wrath Shield is going to be coming out there. As Envy, I don't know about that one. He gets slowed down. And look at the pile up. Twisted advance. Hepa Polo. Yeah, he, uh, and it really paid off. They did. They definitely killed the Varus. And so now, I think Envy is going to lose that uh, advantage as there's Flash Twisted Advance. Seismic Shove going to push Peanut away. As Karras, few more autos and he will be dead. And oh, Polo tries to pick him up, but Zeka does have the Flash. He gets the reset and he gets back over the wall and back to farming once again. Oh, my peaceful. Something like this one. Oh, no. Yeah, that's an ulti. Uh, Viper is going to cleanse and it looks like he didn't even really do it. It's just the animation. But Envy is able to at least fire back that uh, piercing arrow and Polo's moving down with Gideon as well. And Peanut probably going to have to assist as the cow is clearing out some vision. Arrows. Yeah. So basically do what he did in the bottom lane, but don't get seen. Yes. Just make sure that they're more distracted next time. Uh, Summer Life continuing to kind of put the screws in here, especially vision-wise towards this bottom side uh -oh. of the map. As Envy, I've seen this one before, flash out by Polo. He's lit on fire, as Delight does have the Unbreakable Will. Not really going to be using it enough here as the Nature's Grasp out in the mid lane. We'll get a snare onto both the jungler and the mid laner. Explosive charge now is very dangerous. Gideon turning on over towards Zekka here as the Bramble Smash going to push away the Lee Sin. And Morgan might just lose a 1v1 here. Does get the sweet spot on the last two Qs though. And now a hook coming through from Polo. There is a the knock up. Peanut is going to be eradicated immediately. Viper in a decent position, but he'll get flashed on. Another cleanse has to come out. Perfect timing once again as Delight able to soak that one up. Does have his ulti back off cooldown once again. Viper though, zero sums and only 50% health. This could be a potentially dangerous moment for Hamalife Esports as Teleport is going to bring the Gwen in. Nature's Grass comes down. Hepa Polvo on to only one, but Polo is still just going to be taken down. Morgan tries to get in there as Peanut. This time he's going to be able to flash away. Delight is going to be picked off successfully. And now Zekka trying to get some work done off to the side, able to break those chains. Could have been the end of him. I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna assume. Oh, oh. Seismic Shove gonna connect as that's an immediate ulti from Delight. Absorbs a lot of damage. That Extendo Beam does so much work. He can't quite get back in there though as there's the Nature's Grasp. Viper has to get out of there and Gideon closes the gap. Really beautifully done. Another Seismic Shove from Karras who's playing really well but Envy just can't do anything. There are Blast Cones everywhere. This is Valdez's worst nightmare. Doran could take another one. He doesn't have to. And they have a backup AD carry. So yes, you've managed to take down Viper, but Zekka is now there. And he even gets bored of trying to kill the remaining two players because there's a dragon to be From taken. From this point on, as Peanut, woohoo, careens towards this outer turret in the mid lane. He's gonna try again? Yeah, where is he going? Yeah, just, he's practicing. He's on the same he, path. He's like, oh, top of the morning, He's going to too. practice tool, and he's he's done this maneuver several times. Oh, he knows some maneuvers. And now he's just ready to bring it out every game. Gorgeous. That was that was clean drifting. I'm alive, able to utilize both. So nicely done. Bro, still wanting to scuffle, though. You can see Gideon staying in the area. Peanut cannot lock down the blue buff. Can they win the fight? As Nature's Grass coming through once again. Viper, better position. Chains of Corruption go wide. And now Viper's looking for the ulti. He gets it. Gideon going to have to use the kick to disengage. But now Hummer Life Esports have a clear line towards this Baron. The reset's coming through, but they're holding their 
Yeah, Hold waiting for, for a little now. bit more. He's, he's very dead. Were they using Cinder's as dead. bait? They almost were. As there's a seismic shove onto Zekka. Morgan has to use his teleport to try and get himself over here. Bramble Smash tries to get them away as Delight almost does too much. But there is the Buster shot used and the flash out from Zekka gets over the wall. But it is going to be Karis taking out the cow. Let's see whether Envy can be so lucky. And it looks like the turret is going to deter them enough there. So, bro. Actually able to offer a counter punch. Once you have Nashes and Riftmaker, you're feeling absolutely fantastic. Because, bro, they're looking to go for a trade. They'll give up the Drake to the tune of about 5,000 at this point as there's the Pulverize. You can see Delight looking for that angle onto Polo as now Doran dashes in. I think the Gwen may be immune to a lot of the damage that they have available as Chains of Corruption somehow gets onto Doran as Gideon was looking for the backline, but he just explodes into a plume of cinders. And he just got found out. And it's Zekka that's able to lock that one up, and that should guarantee the Baron, because they just got the jungler for free. As Viper and Zekka will make short work of this inhibitor. Doran getting to work in the mid lane as well, as they're looking to try and turn onto the solo Gwen. He gets kicked, but of course, he has the circle, so it's not exactly the optimal maneuver. Nature's Grasp is going to lock down Gideon. He's first on the chopping block, gets smote, and then Doran able to take him down. There is the uh, depth charge, but onto Viper, it doesn't really do anything, and Doran has found Envy. It's the Tristana that locks him up, and then Viper, he's gonna celebrate with a big ulti. He was tanking up two turrets, and that's probably suboptimal, and that is going to be the same thing for Zekka, but they have enough with Doran still here. They'll say goodnight to this game at 26 minutes in. And Peanut almost died, but he's gonna sip some sap. He'll be just fine. Nexus goes down. Palmer Life Esports, that was a shellac. It's looking forwards towards playoffs, because I think they've shown they are very firmly our third best team. Yeah. And they're just looking to try and see by playoffs if they can move above that and look to challenge the teams above. Are we all? Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason for the POG interview translation, joined by Delight and Zeka on the side of HANA Life Esports. Congratulations on the win, guys. First off, how do you feel about the win? I'm happy with the 2-0 clean victory. Yeah, today I think uh, we had a very small volley draft in both two games, and I think we were able to execute it pretty well, so I'm pretty satisfied with that part. Zeka, with this POG, you are a solo third place on the POG ranking with 800 POC points. Interestingly, the top four in the POG rankings are Faker, Chovy, Zeka, and Showmaker, all mid laners. Is this mid lane supremacy right now? Is like mid laner having the most influence over the map? I mean, it always have been, but right now this season, yeah, mid laners' impact has become even stronger. And delight. You had a very clean performance today. Well, last time up against Gen G, Hana Life left a lot to be desired. What aspects did you aim to improve as a team? The main focus was, you know, kind of playing their uh, like each other's role perfectly, like doing their job perfectly as individual players, and that was what we were doing our best to improve on. And delight in the first game, your iconic recon was taken away as the opponents blew first pick, and then your reaction was Rao. Uh, Rally is a really good, you know, multi-position champion. So we just wanted to went for the Rally, which is also a really good, just blind pick champion. And Zeka, tell us about the RVI comp as well. Mid lane two v two is pretty good, and also they can they can kind of spread their influence all over the map as well. And also a very versatile pick. I really like. Uh, I really prefer Ari. Then thoughts on the recent buff on Ari? Yeah, I think she's got multiple buffs in the previous patches, and right now we are having a lot of mage champions on the mid lane. And I thought Ari would be a really decent pick to kind of count those pick or deal with those picks and I think it worked pretty well and your row you know were able to pull off incredible initiation in every team fights what do you focus on the most when opening team fights you know trying to make sure that we can make the CC chains happen and also I have my own angle to open up a team fight 
Yeah, and it seemed like there were some moments where you kind of sacrificed yourself right after initiating. I mean, there were some moments where I, I could just not die, but the opponents were just throwing so many skills and ultimates on me, so I ended up dying so much. Yeah, and I agree. His rel is amazing. And then, game two, Hana Life went for a very damage centered pick. So, in that game, we had two AD carries, and then we had two frontline from jungle and support, so that was the main concept. And in a 2v1 situation, early on, you were able to secure a kill. It was very impressive. What is the key to staying calm in that kind of situation? When you have priority in laning phase, you get to have more kind of vision to seek out where the opponents are at. The light thought it's because Zeka works out a lot, so he can remain his composure. And then, even in uh, even though there were some moments where Bro was also able to fight back, uh, thanks to Tristana and Zeri, you guys ultimately uh, secured a win. Yeah, especially Viper. Uh, his Zeri is just amazing. So as long as we have a stable frontline throughout the team fights, there's no way we are losing fights. And next week will be the most important week for HANA life this season, maybe. Uh, you guys will be facing up against Kwangdong and T1. Yeah, I think round two is almost about to end, so we want to make sure that we can display the best performance possible. I believe both two teams are very strong. I hope we can focus on the issues that we displayed this week and come back stronger. And this will be the end of the interview from Delight, Seka, and back to the space. Thank you.